have, um, good morning, Nginxers. I know it's kind of hard to think of a collective noun for people who use Nginx. I thought about it this morning, and I think the best I can say is, good morning, welcome to Conf, friends, colleagues, and very, very smart engineers. Yesterday, we talked about the transformation of apps. We learned from Gus about how many of the apps of today are not fit for the use cases that we have tomorrow. And that puts a challenge in front of you as DevOps engineers, application developers, INO teams, people who use Nginx to ensure the successful delivery of those applications. The stakes are only higher. We can learn a little bit about that by looking at the recent Dora report. Dora is a research agency sponsored by Google Cloud. And every year, they run a survey and publish a report, the state of DevOps, this year, 2019, published just last week. They look at how the internet has changed, how the industry is changing, and the challenges that you are facing. There's an unprecedented speed of change, proliferation of tools that they track, platforms, technologies. You guys need to move fast, but move safely. They segregated the DevOps audience into a range of different tiers. The top tier, the top 20%, the most productive DevOps teams and engineers, they call them the elite. Maybe elite's a good name for a collective group of Nginx engineers. So they, they looked at the elite. The elite they saw were deploying 208 times more frequently, multiple deploys per day of their code to production. And it was faster. From code commit to production to deploy, 100 times faster, less than a day between commit and deploy, on average, amongst the top 20% of DevOps engineers and DevOps teams. When there was a problem, they were also much more responsive. Two and a half thousand times faster to recover from incidents, less than an hour, typically, mean time to restore service after an incident. And when they committed changes, changes tends to be more reliable. A seventh the change failure rate compared to what they saw with the bottom half of the cohort that they measured. In this world of, of hubris and chaos, when you're moving fast, you're deploying quickly, you're trying to do things safely but risking breaking things, there are some things that you know that you can rely on. Some things we get right and we never need to change, or they may be slow to change. And over 15 years, Nginx has been the technology that you and millions of other sites worldwide rely on. 400 million websites are delivered using Nginx. Almost 3 million public IPs are presenting Nginx to the outside world. Every year in our user survey, we ask people you know, would you recommend Nginx to a friend or colleague? And we put it through an algorithm called Net Promoter to get a score. The score gives the sentiment of how many people there are that are supporters of the organization against those who are detractors. It cuts out those in the middle who are just, just passives. And we consistently score in the 60s, which is a best-in-class score amongst other technology companies. Better than Amazon, better than Microsoft, better than Google. And we ask people, what is it that you appreciate most of all about Nginx? And it's consistent. Year on year, Nginx is fast, it's lightweight, it's easy to configure. As one respondent in the user survey said, I've got 99 problems, but Nginx ain't one of them. So <laughs> we're in a fast-moving world. Unexpected things happen. We're here to help you. And those of you in the room know that if you rely on HTTP, if your business relies on applications, then you know that you can rely on Nginx to deliver those applications. What we're going to do today is my favorite part of Nginx Conf. It's the second day. It's where we drill down into what is happening with the products. 
Sydney gave a little bit of a preview when he ran around the application platform and enumerated every single change that we'd made to Nginx the last year and every single change we're planning to make in the future. But I'd like to come back to that and go through that in a little bit more detail and explain to you what it means, why it's important, how it's going to make things different for you. We have three core members of the Nginx product team coming to talk to you today, along with me, my colleagues, Jason and Liam, been with Nginx for a long time. And we're going to go through the full range of Nginx technologies. But we'll start round down at ground level with the data plane. This is where it all begins. And we'll begin with Nginx open source. In the last 11 months, because it's been 11 months since our last conference, there's been a strong velocity in Nginx open source. We've had 11 releases, 11 feature releases of our open source product, and we focused on the things which matter to, to our user, to our community, to you. We've built out our capabilities around load balancing. A lot of work has gone into rate limits. Rate limits, like caching, are two of the key features that people use with Nginx to protect their application. Caching is a very mature capability. Last year has been investment in rate limits with more programmatic control, so you can tune your rate limits on the fly. The ability to dry run your rate limits so you can test them before you commit them. Better instrumentation, better control over how requests are delayed and then dropped whenever you encounter a large spike of traffic. With proxying, Nginx is a very, very capable HTTP proxy. Last year, we spent some time looking at TCP proxying as well. There's a lot of protocols now that aren't running over HTTP. We've added capabilities so that you can dynamically control the bandwidth of TCP connections. You can control TCP socket options, like Keep Alive. We've improved the way that we track and manage sessions for UDP traffic, so Nginx can manage a wider range of protocols. On SSL, a big change in SSL around scalability on the way that Nginx loads and manages SSL certificates. It can pull the certificates from disk on demand. What that means for you is that you can deploy very, very large SSL farms using Nginx. They're fast. They're reliable. You can update the certificate without needing to reload Nginx conf. You can, you can change certificates. When Nginx loads, now it loads significantly faster because it can pull the certificate from disk and validate it when it's needed rather than startup. So these performance improvements make it much easier to operate Nginx with SSL at scale. We've looked at the use cases, the ways that you and others are using Nginx. We've tested and documented solutions for FIPS, Federal Inf um, Information Processing Standard. It's a federal standard for security. And now we have a documented guide on how you can meet the requirements of FIPS level one using Nginx or FTP, adding in the ability to listen on a range of ports, allows you to support passive FTP as another load balancing protocol. We invested in NJS, our JavaScript engine. NJS is where the, where, where the innovation comes now with Nginx. We see a lot of community contributions. We're using NGS, NJS ourselves to develop and ship new features. It's been part of the, authentic the OAuth authentication capabilities and plus. We're using it for a new Prometheus module. And there's a big community gathering around our JavaScript engine. We've delivered language improvements. We've delivered the ability to load NJS modules. And all of these things are centered around making it more usable, more powerful, easier for you to leverage. And finally, security is a very important aspect of what we do at Nginx. And being a part of the community puts a big burden on us to handle security responsibly. Nginx is the world's leading HTTP2 endpoint. Nginx delivers more websites and services over HTTP2 than any other bit of software. And earlier this year, Netflix, one of our biggest users and a very close technical partner, discovered a series of vulnerabilities in HTTP2 that could be exploited to create a denial of service attack. These vulnerabilities were related to ambiguities in the protocol for HTTP2, ways that an attacker could exploit that protocol to cause an implementation to behave in a strange way. 
along with about a dozen other vendors who were similarly affected by these vulnerabilities. We worked as a community behind the scenes to identify, to fix these vulnerabilities. We shipped fixes to our Nginx Plus subscribers quietly as binary only because it was important to keep a lid on what was happening. And then we were part of the coordinated disclosure of this vulnerability and pushing out changes to Nginx open source at the same time so that you could quickly protect yourselves. We have a degree of responsibility in how we build and manage and operate the Nginx product and the development lifecycle that few other open source projects do. And we carry that carefully. Our values of security, of availability, and reliability are the values that we know you, as users of Nginx, honor and respect as well. What are we going to see in the future for Nginx open source? There is going to be a big investment to support quick, now dubbed HTTP3. This is a, another generation of the HTTP protocol. We, we look at this with a degree of trepidation, because the team who have promoted quick have looked at 40 years of experience with TCP and decided that, yeah, they could do that better with UDP. So there's a little bit of skepticism there, but it's something which our community and our users are looking for. It unquestionably brings performance benefits in certain circumstances. It's, it's no coincidence that Google's home page loads very, very fast when you hit it with Chrome on your desktop. That's quick, working well end to end. The challenge to us is to build a general purpose quick implementation that can run an Nginx where we don't have control of both ends of the connection, and it works well with Chrome and other third-party quick implementations. That's going to be a very significant engineering investment for our team over the next 12 months. Every now and then, we're able to trickle some functionality down from Nginx Plus into Nginx open source. It's important that we continue to feed the community in that way. And we'll be moving some of the statistics framework from Nginx Plus into Nginx open source in the next year. We won't be moving the stats themselves, the things that you get that are sp unique and specific to Nginx Plus. But what it means is that if you're developing tools to monitor Nginx, you'll be able to use a consistent API to get those stats out, whether it's Plus or whether it's open source. If you're building your own modules, you'll be able to instrument those and add those in to the API. And finally, there is going to be continued investment in JavaScript. It's where the innovation happens right now, and it's the platform that we're starting to use to ship new product features as well. So there is a rich and bright future ahead for Nginx open source. Let's look at a specific use case or a specific deployment environment for Nginx. Let's look at Kubernetes. As I mentioned, we conduct a user survey every year. Many of you will have completed it. And we ask questions such as, what platforms do you run Nginx on? Do you use Kubernetes in production? Our Nginx open source community absolutely does. Last year, 27% of our users responded that they're using Kubernetes in production, up to 35% this year. But if you segment this by the users who use Nginx Plus, and we do that with our data, the cohort of users who are most attuned to what they need to deliver their application successfully. It's even bigger, with almost 50% of Nginx Plus users using Kubernetes in production. And our solutions for Kubernetes center around our Kubernetes ingress controller. An ingress controller is a load balancing solution that you deploy on Kubernetes that is configured using Kubernetes APIs, so it can be driven by a DevOps engineer when he or she pushes a service to production. They can push out what's called an ingress resource, a request to make that service available externally. And the ingress controller configures the load balancer to do that completely automatically, completely, you know, completely quickly. Nginx has one of the most mature implementations of ingress controllers. There is the default choice, the community ingress controller. It's built in Nginx as well. That, alongside ours, covers about 70% of Kubernetes deployments. We are the load balancer of choice in Kubernetes. 
We chose to go our own way, build our own open source ingress controller, because we wanted it to reflect our values. The values of stability, supportability, performance. We wanted it to be an ingress controller that you could rely on. And we've achieved that. In the future, you will see potentially some integrations with F5's big IP. The ingress controller, in many cases, needs an external load balancer to route traffic to it. And just as we have integrations with Amazon and Google and others, then you may see future integrations. And there's a great story, we call it our bridging the divide story, that describes how you can get the benefits of both traditional governance with big IP and rapid agile deployment with Nginx by deploying them together in this sort of scenario. There's innovation happening in the ingress controller space. Now, the ingress controller is configured using a Kubernetes object called an ingress resource. And those ingress resources, they are fairly venerable resources. They are limited to basic SSL, TLS, and some HTTP load balancing configuration, and extending them is hard using annotations, config maps, custom templates. They're custom. They, there's no type safety. They have global scope. They're not fine-grained. They're difficult to work with. We have a project to add a new, this is an incremental additional way to configure our ingress controller. Again, in a Kubernetes native fashion, using custom resource definitions to give you richer load balancing configuration, give you control over the precise parameters of how Nginx proxies traffic to upstream services in Kubernetes, to give you traffic splitting, split clients for blue-green deployments, to give much more sophisticated conditional routing so you can pull out a debug request from your internal network and send that to a different service to your regular traffic, your, re your regular traffic service. And this approach, the timing, the future for ingress controllers is here. The first release came out in May of this year, and we're going to continue to iterate on improving the way that we configure ingress controller so that you will have a solution that is fully compliant and compatible with the way you operate in Kubernetes. It fully respects Kubernetes namespaces, giving you rule-based access control, and it gives you much richer, more reliable control over load balancing in Kubernetes. And it's open source. We're committed that the ingress controller implementation will be and will always be an open source product, working with either Nginx open source or with Nginx Plus. Then we come to security. After caching, after rate limiting, security is another critical capability that we're able to help you with in Nginx. F5 have a rich security team, a research team. Over the last six months, they have detected 69 new attack campaigns against 18 different off-the-shelf web applications. Security for you is more important than anything. Most commonly, they found 25 different attack campaigns against Oracle WebLogic, trying to exploit several different CVEs and authentication issues in WebLogic. But 17 other application stacks were being attacked. So security is key. And Nginx has worked very closely with Trustwave over the last two years on the Mod Security project. Mod Security is the world's most widely deployed web application firewall. It's open source. It is managed and owned by Trustwave. And there are implementations for Nginx and other web servers and other platforms. We fully support that project. We have a team who contribute to that project. Um, a dozen or so optimizations and fixes have come, have been contributed by Nginx to the public mod security project. And in the last 12 months, and we can't take full credit for this, a lot of this came from Trustwave engineers, but there's been a two times performance improvement in mod security over that 12 months. Our commitment for supporting and contributing to mod security will continue unabated. Not only because the community needs that because we have customers who are paying for our curated mod security build, which is based entirely on the open source tree, by the way. There's no private code there. Not only because of that, but because it's the right thing for us as open source citizens to do. 
But one of the great opportunities that working with F5 brings is that F5 have a very, very rich suite of capabilities around web application firewall. Much more capable than the signature-driven capabilities of mod security. F5 security labs provide threat feeds for the campaigns they're monitoring, IP reputation lists, credential stuffing lists, those capabilities for bot detection and prevention, user behavior analysis, scrubbing responses, and encryption end-to-end -end security capabilities that are already shipping and are enjoyed by F5, Big IP, and, and other, other users. So next year, the plan is to take a lot of that technology and to pull it out of the Big IP framework and make it available within Nginx as well. So that over the next 12 months, I anticipate that you will see the beginning of a tier of very advanced security solutions that plug directly into Nginx coming as a result of the acquisition that's just passed. There's still more. Let's talk about Nginx Plus. Nginx Plus, our users from Eng for Nginx Plus enjoy a support experience that is without compare. As those of you who've submitted support tickets will know, you always get a follow-up email with a little, how, you know, how, would you recommend Nginx support to a colleague on a scale of 0 to 10? And we thank you for everyone who completes that and adds comments to that. We've not done this before, but that 0 to 10 is, is, a, is another one of these net promoter calculations. Net promoter measures the sentiment. How much do people who use a, surf, a service appreciate and like and wish to recommend that service? And we got a great score every year with Nginx in the 60s. That is best in class. Um, the only names that I recognized when I went through the league tables that were higher were Apple with 68 and Southwest Airlines with 71. I've never flown Southwest, but obviously people like it. Last night, I took the last year's worth of scores from our support team. So these were scores that you and other Nginx Plus users submitted. You ranked our support on a scale of 0 to 10. And I was delighted to see that so net promoter ranges from minus 100, as low as it can be, to plus 100. And I think we must have broken just about every record because our support team, and they deserve a round of applause, scored 90 out of 100 for the customer sentiment. That is a fantastic achievement. <laughs> and if any one thing should recommend Nginx Plus to you, it's the quality of the engineers and the support team that you will see acting as part of your team and providing you with a very rapid response to questions and challenges and optimizations that you wish to talk about. There's been an extended ecosystem. Um, we've had additional modules added in. We've, we've worked with, with Perimeter X, Signal Sciences. Open source modules like Brotly and Open Tracing have been brought into the Nginx Plus fold and shipped and tested as part of the Nginx Plus distribution. And because we take security seriously, and because our customers ask us about security, we commissioned an independent security review to audit the Nginx Plus code to examine our software development lifecycle, and to try and pen test some of the Nginx Plus features. We learned a lot from that experience. There were some opportunities to improve a few of our processes and code. But the organization that inspected that code and ran, ran the tests gave us some very, very strong reviews. They could see that security was our goal from the very beginning in everything that we did. They were impressed with the way that the product was architected, the level of defensive coding within the core of Nginx to reduce the potential attack surface on each and every feature that we ship. And they recognized that the things that we do in private with Nginx Plus are, um, are very much the same as the things that we do in public with Nginx open source. The values, the processes that we use in public are under public scrutiny, are applied equally whenever we build Nginx Plus. There's been three releases of Nginx Plus over the last year. A lot of functionality has shipped. Um, of course, Nginx Plus inherits the open source capabilities. We ship in Nginx open source, but it brings its own functionality as well. An investment in authentication, particularly around OpenID, OpenID Connect, to automate the gathering of keys to make it easier for you to manage 
on IDP infrastructure. Opaque tokens, the ability to track session tokens, support the logout flow, makes Nginx Plus a very, very capable way to implement authentication using OpenID Connect in front of any HTTP application, whether it's a web application or an API. We've added more control over TCP connections, mirroring some of the things that we've done in open source. So we can handle a wider range of use cases with health checks and retries and shutting down connections when necessary. More detailed metrics. You will now have the ability to instrument individual locations within an Nginx configuration and count metrics for those. And support for Prometheus. The metrics which are available through the Nginx Plus API can now be exported using the Prometheus format and consumed with industry standard tools like Grafana. This is in addition, of course, to all the capabilities we shipped in open source. There's always a fine balance between what we put into open source and what we, in, what we put into Plus. And every time, every release, we review it to make sure that we're doing the right thing for both the community who rely on Nginx as the leading web server reverse proxy, and for our subscribers who rely on Nginx for hosting and managing their commercial services. Finally, I'd like to talk about Nginx Unit. Or rather, because you don't want to hear about Unit from me, we have, it, it would be a wasted opportunity when Igor is here to not get him up on stage and to talk about what is happening with Nginx Unit. Igor is perhaps one of the most humble engineers you'll ever meet, but an incredibly smart guy, and it's a delight to have him up on stage to share with us some of the things that are happening with Nginx Unit. So please join me in welcoming Igor on stage. Welcome. Thank you, Igor. Thank you for joining us. So, dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Igor, you've, wow, where are we? OK, so Igor, you've, you founded the Nginx project over 15 years ago. It's grown. It's been, as we've seen, phenomenally successful. You must be really proud of what you feel that you've achieved with Nginx over those years. I'm pleased uh, that uh, Nginx help, uh, helped many companies to be successful and even started uh, new businesses mm -hmm. around Nginx software. Uh, also, I particularly proud by, uh, of our engineering team at Nginx, uh, who maintains performance, security, and lightweight nature of Nginx. It's been a great achievement. But about six years ago, you started a new project. You were doing some research work, and then we, you coined UNIT. The first release of UNIT was two years ago. Yeah. What is it that you've, you're trying to achieve with UNIT that you felt you weren't able to achieve with Nginx? Uh, with Nginx, we, uh, we have addressed um, load balancing and proxy. Mm -hmm. And uh, with UNIT, we wanted to take the challenges of running applications in modern, dynamic, and API-driven way. So UNIT supports a range of different languages for running applications? Yeah, at the moment, um, UNIT supports uh, seven languages. Uh, PHP, Python, Java, Node.js, Perl, and Ruby. And uh, currently, we don't plan to extend this list because it's quite comprehensive S at the moment. Seven is, is pretty good coverage. I was, I was talking to one of our customers recently, and they described how their development team used many of those different unit stacks. And they, had to, they managed a library of over 20 containers, certified containers that the developers could push code to. And they replaced that with UNIT, a single, larger, fatter container with all of those stacks in place. And they were able to reduce that down to a single production container that they needed to support and maintain. So they saw huge benefits in using UNIT. What's coming next in the roadmap for UNIT? Uh, in the nearest future, we plan to add support of uh, static file server, uh, serving um, more sophisticated routing rules mm -hmm. and um, proxying. Brilliant. And you're going to be showing some of the capabilities of units later on, I understand, at the extended session. Yeah. Yeah. You, Igor, thank you very much for joining. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure chatting yeah. with you. <laughs> So thank you very much 
for your time for the first part of our product session. We've gone through the data plane. So I'm going to draw it for a close. And later on, you'll hear from my colleagues around things we're doing with APIs and monitoring and controller. So thank you again. <laughs>